Good morning. The Lord be with you. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, and we continue the sermon theme, Alive and Well. And today, the theme is Alive and Well and with keys, with keys, K-E-Y-S. A couple of announcements to mention. Um, well, really, I'm just going to invite you to, to see all the announcements on the board and to read your bulletins. You'd make Cindy very happy if you would read carefully every week your bulletins, right, Cindy? Yeah. It brought a smile to her face just saying it. Um, next Sunday, we're going to hear about a building beds project, Sleep in Heavenly Peace. And today, we're going to hear about a, another a little effort, a little project that we are, we are concocting. And I'm going to ask my friend Ken Iflon to come forward. As he comes forward, I'm going to find some, several adjectives to describe him. And uh, I have found Ken to be a really uh, reliable and kindly and interesting uh, leader here at Epiphany Lutheran. I could tell you some stories about him, but I'll save those stories for a second service. He's also going to sing and dance for us today, a little bit later on. You keep adding things on to it. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name's Ken Iflin. For those who do not know me, I am been going here a long time, but I'm currently the school board chairperson, and uh, I want to thank you all uh, up front for your support for the school. It, the school is a tremendous blessing, and uh, I, when I walk through these halls, I just want you all to know that the education and care that these kids are getting is phenomenal, and they love it, and their parents love it, so thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> There's another project that we want to start. As everybody knows, uh, things kind of went up in price a little bit recently. And we feel like the young families that are just starting out usually are the most economically challenged because they're new in their careers. They have young children. And a young family can spend anywhere from a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars a month on diapers alone. That doesn't include formula. Uh, they bring lunches. They're required to bring their own lunches. So we wanted to start a project that's called a blessing closet and we're just asking if anybody would like to donate to that cause. You can donate a gift card monetarily or the items. We're going to start with diapers. We want to eventually get to formula and maybe snacks for the kids. But we, uh, we had to raise our tuition at school because we hadn't raised it in five years. So these families are really, they're, they're being economically impacted quite a bit right now, these young families. So if any of you all feel like you would like to uh, donate to that, we'd appreciate it and there'll be more to come on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, and again, look for more details about our blessings closet, uh, more details to come. Now, throughout the Easter season, we're going to start it out this way. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please rise. <clears throat> we begin today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Confess our sins. God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Almighty and gracious God, the keeper of all promises, and to one another, our faults, our failures, and our shortcomings, we admit that in so many ways we have sinned against you and our neighbors and have it for the sake of your Son, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. 
delight in your grace and walk humbly in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant, ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hymn 457. Continue with the Kyrie as printed in your bulletin. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Sing with all. 
seated. Our lessons help us to, uh, to see the, uh, the, gospel, the resurrection gospel going forward in the book of Acts and in Revelation and in our gospel lesson for today. Our first lesson for the second Sunday of Easter is from the fifth chapter of Acts. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes from the first chapter of Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, 
and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his waist, excuse me, his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire, his feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not. I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise out of respect for the words and ministry of Jesus Christ. Gospel according to St. John. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, 
But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our texts include all three lessons, reading, adding to it now Matthew 16. Jesus speaks, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is God's word. You may be seated. I need to say this, that for 42 years in ministry, on the second Sunday of Easter, I've always sung, ye sons and daughters of our king. But I meant to choose him 470 instead of 471. Anthony, sorry about that. But I kind of like the tune now that I've sang it nine times. Um. <laughs> About 35 years ago, good friends of ours gave us the keys to their, what I consider a luxury van for a trip. We were taking to our family vacation in northern Minnesota, Rattle Lake. Understand that our kids were at that stage where they didn't think our Pontiac station wagon was roadworthy. In fact, they were embarrassed by uh, my habit of tying suitcases on top of our station wagon and joyfully being on our way. Once or twice, the suitcases actually uh, kind of, they didn't fall off, but they slipped down, and so they were riding alongside the, the windows. So much to the dismay of my children. In any case, I was a bit nervous about uh, taking this very nice van on this trip, and I laid down the law uh, that there would be no rough housing along the way, that, and I didn't want to do any damage to this van. I was distressed, to say the very least, when on the way home my daughter informed me that our son had broken an armrest. Needless to say, he received quite the tongue lashing along the lines of kids these days not appreciating all that parents do for them and so forth. The end of the story is that when I profusely apologized to my friend Howard and Vicki, who had loaned us the van, he chuckled and said it was already broken. <clears throat> keys, keys are a symbol of authority. Whoever possesses keys to a building has the authority to both lock and unlock those doors, to let folks in or to keep them out. In our epistle lesson for today, Jesus helps the frightened apostle John back on his feet. He announces that although he was dead, he is alive forever and ever, and that he holds the keys to death and the grave. In today's gospel lesson, the hands, Jesus hands the keys to his disciples and empowers them to forgive the sins of the repentant and to declare judgment to those who are not repenting. Last Sunday, our theme was Alive and Well, and the two encouragements we received were to be, number one, standing strong in the faith, and number two, to be working hard in the kingdom. Next Sunday, our theme will be Alive and Well and singing a new song. Today's theme is Alive and Well and with Keys. Three parts to our sermon today, all starting with the letter P. God's peace, God's purposes, God's power. God's peace. In the opening story of our sermon today, I would not let our family be at peace until we returned what I considered a luxury van to its owner, clean and undamaged. That's what we call worldly peace, a peace that depends on Things going the way I think they should go. Worldly peace for the Ukrainians will happen only when the Russians quit brutalizing them. Worldly peace for parents happens when their sons and daughters make good decisions. It happens in marriages when husbands and wives are faithful and reliable. Worldly peace happens in inner cities where there is law and order. Our risen Savior offers a peace that goes beyond human circumstances. God's peace is not the absence of turmoil. It is a calmness in the midst of turmoil. God's peace is not a lack of conflict. It is a wisdom from above that provides a way through conflict. God's peace is not that we stop hurting and disappointing one another, but rather that all of our hurts and disappointments have been washed away in the blood of the Lamb. God's peace doesn't mean that we won't find ourselves at local cemeteries laying our loved ones into the ground, 
It means that our loved ones are in the presence of Jesus already now and that there will be a resurrection of that body. When Jesus appeared suddenly to his frightened and huddled together disciples, they may have been expecting a bit of a rebuke, a scolding, a I told you so kind of a lecture. But instead he calmed them down with a gentle, peace be with you. In other words, everybody take a, take a breath. Let not your hearts be troubled. Your past mistakes have been sent away. All prophecy has been fulfilled. The Father has accepted my sacrifice as payment in full for the sins of all generations. A new chapter of life is underway. The kingdom of God is like a Facebook friend of mine this past week who posted that he can't sleep at nights. He lies awake worrying about the bad choices his teenage son is making. He blurts out in his message, my son is headed down a horrific path and I don't know what to do about it. A friend reminds him that God's love for him and his son is deep. That God's love is wide and forever. He is reminded that Jesus promises to be their good shepherd and to follow his son around with goodness and mercy in all the chapters of his life. He is reminded that Jesus is alive, awake, aware, nearby. That night, he falls asleep in peace, not because his problems are solved, but because God's peace has resettled into his soul. God's purposes. In today's opening story, my purposes for our family vacation were twofold. Purpose number one was to have a pleasant time. Purpose number two was to return my friend's van in undamaged condition. In today's story of Jesus patiently and lovingly accommodating the doubting Thomas and giving him the evidence he was demanding, we find that Jesus has a singular purpose, that his early disciples would be convinced and equipped and motivated to take the gospel of resurrection to the ends of the earth, that his disciples would believe and that their faith would be contagious, that millions and millions of redeemed sinners would believe on the basis of their written-down testimony, and that by believing, they would have life in his name, not just a little bit of life once in a while when the sailing was smooth and the scenery was beautiful. Jesus came that we may have life and that we might have it abundantly, even when and especially when the storms of life are overwhelming and the detours of life are ever so frustrating. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Phase one was that Jesus was sent on a mission to seek and to save out lost sinners. Phase number two is that he invites us to join him on this same mission. For three years now, Jesus had been getting this motley crew of fishermen and carpenters and unimpressive men ready to take the keys of the kingdom and use them as intended. Already in the region of Caesarea Philippi, Matthew had recorded Jesus one day asking his disciples, who are people saying that I am? And they gave him a variety of answers. And then Jesus looked his disciples in the eyes and said, who do you say I am? Peter answered that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus blessed Peter in that moment and promised that on the rock of Peter's confession, he would build his church, and the gates of hell would never prevail against it. And then he spoke these words, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Lutheran scholars have identified these two keys as the law and the gospel. The key of the law, when applied to unrepentant sinners, closes heaven to them. The key of the gospel, when applied 
to repentant sinners opens heaven to them. The law accuses, but the gospel exonerates. The law is a mirror to the depths of our own hearts, but the gospel reflects the desires of God's heart. The law shows us that we're in the wrong place and we're doing wrong things. The gospel invites us to take refuge in him who did all the right things. The law drives us to our knees. The gospel takes us by the hand and puts us back on our feet. The law tells us that we are sinners deserving of judgment. But the gospel announces that we are set free. It announces that we are set free and heirs of all the treasures of heaven. The kingdom of God is like a congregation of believers who receive a steady diet of law and gospel preaching and teaching. They get calmed down by God's peace and they get fired up as often as they are reminded of his purposes. They rest easy in the forgiveness of their sins, and at the same time they work hard while it is day, for the night cometh and no one can work. Like Thomas, they doubt and they despair and they demand additional evidence, but as often as they put themselves in a position for the Spirit of God to work on their hearts, he works on their hearts. He works wonders in their hearts And again and again, they lift up their hearts and they cry out with Thomas, my Lord and my God. God's power. One of my Facebook friends uh, posted this a few days ago. Quote, the dark side is winning. I feel alone in my health issues. I feel like the demons have tied me down. I feel suffocated with all doctor bills. When I get punched down, it's hard for me to get back up. I can't get out of bed most days. She writes, depression is real. I am not looking for sympathy. All I need is emotional support. End of quote. My friend Emily is a woman of faith. She believes that Jesus is alive and well for her and always will be with her. Yet that does not inoculate her against feeling weak and heavy laden. We see clearly in the case of Thomas that Christian faith comes along with all kinds of doubts and concerns and questions and complaints. Faith is strengthened as often as we hear the truths of the gospel. But doubts appear as often as the devil and his demons whisper lies into our ears. To the disciples on that first Easter evening, Jesus breathes and declares, receive the Holy Spirit. To Emily, feeling alone and suffocated and punched down, Jesus would breathe on her and invite, receive the Holy Spirit. To each and every one of us here today, weighed down with anxiety or going through all kinds of tests or troubles or tribulations, Jesus would breathe on us in this hour and whisper, receive ye the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he instructed his disciples that they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in the surrounding regions, and far away. He said, wait in Jerusalem and you're going to receive power from on high. Ten days later, that's exactly what happened. Jesus poured out his Holy Spirit in superabundant fashion, and from that moment on, God's peace was to be proclaimed near and far, far. We see in the first lesson of the day the apostles healing and, and uh, doing miracles in the name of the risen Savior. His purposes were carried out as, as told in the book of Acts. In Revelation chapter 1, John hears a loud voice like a trumpet, which is the very voice of the risen Savior himself. John turns to see seven golden lampstands, which represent the whole church of every time and place. In the midst of the lampstands, he sees the Son of Man clothed with a long robe and sash, 
which symbolizes maturity and authority. His white hair symbolizes holiness and purity. His eyes blazing like fire can look right into the depths of our souls and see what's going on. His feet are like red hot bronze that can destroy and reduce to ashes all they trample on, symbolizing righteous anger against our sinful ways. A voice like a sound of rushing waters implies the full power of Almighty God like that of a thundering waterfall. This is a Janet Hinton sort of a passage, huh? The seven stars are, are the leaders of the churches, and the golden candlesticks are the churches themselves. Here they are pictured as being safely in Jesus' right hand. The double-edged sword proceeds directly out of his mouth and carries both the threat of judgment and the invitation to salvation. God's power. The kingdom of God is like a congregation of believers who have their anxious days, their peaceful days, and their days filled with purpose. On their anxious days, they worry about that which has gone wrong. They worry about that which is going wrong, and they worry about that which could possibly go wrong. On their peaceful days, they rest in the Easter truths that Jesus is alive. Their sins are forgiven. Their names are written in the book of life. Jesus is ruling all of heaven and earth with authority. They rejoice in knowing that he is working all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. And then there are those days when they are filled with that purpose. Those who are on Facebook go looking for folks who need to be encouraged. They make time for family and friends who are struggling. They speak the truths of law and gospel with patience and wisdom. They have a way of lighting up rooms that they enter. Their joy is in the Lord. And their faith is, more often than not, contagious. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which surpasses human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith unto life eternal. Amen. As you are able, please rise up for prayer. God, we praise and thank you for all that you are, all that you were, and all that you will ever be. We praise you as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We especially praise you today for all that is good and right in our lives, in our church, in our country, and in our world. In the midst of all of the peace and prosperity and strength that we have, we pray, O oh Lord, especially today for Ukraine and for the people who are in flight and hunkering down. We pray for those whose uh, lives have been disrupted and who have buried their loved ones and are receiving ongoing attack. O oh Lord, we pray that you would be refuge and strength to all who are hurting and struggling. We pray for all of those who are uh, looking for you to work things out, that you would help us to have faith and to be strong in our confidence that you are Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We thank you for all of the good health so many of us enjoy, and we pray especially today for our friend Charlotte, who was injured in a, in a fall. Uh, we pray for all those we, we name in our hearts, for Diane, for Krista. We pray, O oh Lord, for healing for those who are traveling through cancer or injury or 
anticipating surgeries or recovering from surgery. Heal them according to your will. Help them not to be afraid, but to trust in you, Lord, in your mercy. We pray today especially for our friends, our neighbors on Twisting Vine Way, that you would send your angels to be with them, that they would know this week how deep and wide is your love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray in this Easter season, O oh Lord, that your peace would be ruling in our hearts and that our faith would be lively and contagious. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray today, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament as printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, meet right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. This morning I would remind you that on my right is a tray of individually prepared wafers. Next to that, a tray of gluten-free wafers. We remember today that uh, our Lord's Supper is pure gospel, that in this uh, feast uh, we celebrate the victory that Christ has uh, given uh, through his resurrection. Jesus Christ holds us close and fills us with his Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you, this to remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you, for the remission of sins, as do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. We pray, dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for refreshing us with this Holy Supper, and we pray that you would strengthen each one of us in our faith towards you and in love for our neighbors. In Jesus' strong name, in the name of our risen Savior, we pray, amen. amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Two thoughts before we uh, dismiss ourselves. Number one, uh, Bible class is studying 1 Timothy chapter 5 today, a young pastor called to relate to all ages in the church. And secondly, I often exaggerate about the, uh, the refreshments, but I tell you, today there is a, a veritable feast out there. I mean, you, you need to have one or more of these, uh, of these uh, snacks. They are really something. And there's really great coffee as well. And we leave ourselves with a vision send-off, with God's help to make lifelong followers of Jesus here, there, and everywhere. I think I had a memorized.